Hey, what's up? It's Mike D from Kill Switch Engage. You're watching Shockwave TV. Hey, everybody. This is Mikey from Shockwave Magazine. Here with me is Dustin from our interview for today, along with Mike D from Kill Switch Engage. And we're about to do an interview for tonight's show with the reunion of Jesse to the band. So we're all pretty psyched for it. And now I'm going to take it over to Dustin, who's about to do the interview. Hello everybody, I'm Dustin, I'm with Shockwave, and as you already know, this is Mike D'Antonio from Kill Switch Engage. He is the bassist, and let's start this interview. Uh, I was just wondering, do you have a new CD coming out with uh, Jesse at all? Yep, we've been working on it for a while, um, all summer actually. Uh, we had uh, finished all the instruments, all, everything, all the music was done, and then uh, we had Jesse go in and do a couple tracks, and then uh, while he was doing it, he's like, oh, man, I really want to feel the close-knittedness of being on tour again before I get back into these vocals. So we, we kind of halted production, went on a Trespass tour, the Five Finger Death Punch tour, and then came back, and uh, Jesse picked up right where he left off, and actually had like five new voices that we had never heard before, just picking them up on the road. So we had to go back and redo some of the tracks that he did previous to stopping and, uh, and and make everything sound cohesive it was it just uh, it was pretty cool so at this point uh, we're just mixing and we're getting ready to release this thing next year probably uh, spring of next year cool how's the uh, writing process going now I mean who actually starts the writing process could it be you or Adam or Jesse or anyone? we all write it um, we just say okay if you guys get demos bring them to practice so um, you, you pretty much write non-stop you know, put, put things away for later, and then uh, <clears throat> when it's time, when the call comes in, then we all start playing demos for each other, we sit around, we talk about them, um, and then uh, pick out the ones that we like the best, and we all sit around a computer, these days, this is how we write now, we sit around a computer, and we'll rewrite the entire demo right there, with everyone sitting there, adding in their own ideas and stuff like that. You can turn that thing down if you want. That's an awesome thing you got there. We you listen to a little is that the volume there? A little bit of uh, Mike Patton and the boys. <laughs> I think I got it there. Alright, um, you personally, like, what are, you, what are some of your biggest influences? Um, old school hardcore is what I grew up on. Uh, New York in particular, Chromags, Leeway, Nasty Front, Madball, Bad Brains, stuff like that. Really, uh, whatever I think, okay, I gotta write a new riff. I'll listen to those bands and try to come up with something uh, a little off off kilter that people nowadays wouldn't think about. Yeah, but yeah. back then, man, there was some really cool stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you feel about Howard leaving the band? Um, well, it, it was uh, it was pretty rough, really rough. Uh, there was a two-year interim where we weren't sure what was going on, uh, just giving that guy as much love and support as we possibly could, and um, it just didn't work out the yeah. way we wanted it to. I loved Howard being in the band. He had one of the best voices I've ever heard. <laughs> well, yeah. Jesse's good too. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> He's good, trust me. I've been yeah. listening, I've been listening to original. just breathing all day. You're going <laughs> to see a lot more smiles on stage with Jesse than you've ever seen before. So, oh, really? Uh, right. yeah. so will we hear anything from the other eras of Kill Switch, or is it going to be focused primarily on while Jesse was with the band? Um, no, we do uh, a few other tunes, and they're all Howard stuff. Okay, do any other stuff, material from any other band projects or what have you, like Times of Grace or anything like that? Uh -huh. <laughs> kill switch. Yeah, this is kill switch. We have way too many songs to be diving right. into other bands' right. yeah. material. Can I ask what might be the songs that you're going to be doing by Howard Jones? Uh, we do Bid Farewell. We do nice. uh, Rose's Sharon. Nice. We do My Curse. We do Heartache. Oh my God, it's all good stuff. Um, do you have any like rival rivalries with any other bands? Fuck, no. Am I allowed to swear? <laughs> <laughs> no, no way. Right. No, there's, Free a really, domain. there's a great camaraderie between Massachusetts bands, and uh, I don't know if we outgrew all that competition stuff uh, yeah. that happened in the late 80s, early 90s, but I don't see it anymore. Yeah. And if you do see it, those bands are usually shunned because right. everyone seems to be really good friends these days. Uh, no competitions at all. Everyone's rooting for each other. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's it's a non-stop love fest how's, on the road. How's your relationship with Brian Fair and the band? I mean, you guys have worked together previously, so... And yeah, Brian Fair used to be in a, a band that we started in 91 called Overcast with myself and uh, Pete Cortese, who uh, went on to do Seamless with Jesse Leach. And um, he's, a, he's an awesome guy. We've been friends this whole time. We've done Ozfests with Shadows Fall. We've done multiple, multiple tours with Shadows Fall. Um, and uh, Brian and I, during that two-year interim where we weren't sure what was going on with Killswitch, uh, I started a new band with him called Death Ray Vision. It's a throwback to, like I said, my influences in uh, 90s New York hardcore. <laughs> and uh, the record uh, should be out in a couple months. We've, we did a, a full-length Death Ray Vision. It's called uh, We Ain't Leaving Till You're Bleeding. <laughs> so it's like tough guy stuff. Yeah, that's funny. Tongue-in-cheek cool. stuff. What kind of a uh, relationship do you have with uh, Periphery and Akaro? Uh, Akaro, um, Jay Fitzgerald, used to play for Overcast as well. He used to play drums, and he okay. is the drummer for Akaro. Uh, Jay also happens to be my my uh, private contractor at my house. He redid a, a bunch of bathrooms for me, and uh, he built a deck at my house and stuff like that. And uh, I've been really good friends with him for, for uh, you know since Overcast broke up. And uh, he he was just looking to be on the road, no matter what. He needed to get on the road, and um, you know no one's getting any younger. So uh, we needed a drum tech, tech, so we brought him on as a drum tech. And uh, his band of car was playing a lot. And we really like the band, we like the guys, um, so we said, you guys should come on the road with us. They don't have a booking agent, they don't have a label, they don't have a manager, um, and they just wanted to break into it. They just wanted to start, hit the ground running, and we figured this is the best tour for them to do that. So yeah, they're pretty hardcore. We, uh, we brought them on board, and they've been killing it, <laughs> killing it, selling out all their merch. Uh, people love them. Like. They should be an up-and-coming band uh, to watch out for. As far as Periphery, I'm not super familiar with them, um, but Jesse is good friends with those guys, so he brought them on board for this last three Yeah, they're very, very progressive. Very progressive. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, your artwork and stuff. Uh, apparently you do all the artwork for Kill Switch and mm -hmm. even some or all for Shadows Fall. Is that true? Uh, I've done like the logos for Shadows Fall. I did uh, the Art of Balance record cover nice. for them. I do a lot of layout stuff. I did the new Unearth record. Uh, I did the new Crowbar record. Um, I'm doing the new Kill Switch, the new uh, Death Ray Vision. Um, before I was, a, well, I guess I started playing bass and doing graphic design at the same time. Uh, I started in high school. I have a bunch of friends that needed stickers or posters or something like that, and um, I worked. I was a, at a vocational high school and I was running printing presses and stuff like that and I knew that I could sneak on all sorts of promotional stuff without the teachers seeing it. So um, I did that for quite a while and then uh, college for four years. So I've been, I've been doing my business dark iconic design since like 1992 or something like that. I mean I was in, I was in all these bands and we'd play out and I just figured it would be the best way to promote business by just taking flyers and putting them on the table and uh, it just kind of broke out from there so I've been doing stuff for a long time yeah uh, New England Metal Fest I do their logos and shirts every year and it's fun and it's it's easy to do on the road because there's nothing but downtime besides doing interviews and sound checks there's really nothing else to do so uh, plug in the laptop and kind of escape <coughs> the thought of just not being home by just immersing myself in, in artwork and design. And, and also we're visiting all these parts of the world, so um, it's easy to get photos of everything you can possibly think of uh, to use in my design work. So I, I have a plethora of gigs and pump gigs of just everything you can possibly think of. Uh, does the new CD have a name yet? Have what? Does the new C CD have a name yet? It does, but I don't know if I'm allowed to <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think we're releasing that. Uh, <laughs> Everything's slowly but surely. There, I, there's like a good amount of setup times. So they're leaking things very slow. So what might you compare the new material to? Um, it's really aggressive because, like I said, we were home doing nothing for a while. Which pissed that we were not on the road. Yeah. All we wanted to do is, is play. And when you're forced to sit in your room and do nothing for a while, it just makes you angry. And we were 
angry, or at least I know I was very angry. A lot of my stuff has tons of double bass and blast beats. And, nice. Uh, it's pretty aggro, man. So it's definitely more progressive than normal kill switch. I would say it's a blend of Alive Just Breathing and As Daylight Dies. Nice, nice. Kind of along those yeah. lines. Yeah, Alive Just Breathing was pretty hardcore for, for a new sound. Cool. Um, what's your favorite song to play live? I love Bid Farewell. Maybe because it starts with bass, but it's just it's very impactful. And when it hits uh, in the very beginning, it hits really hard for me. I hurt my neck sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun one to play, though. Yeah. Personally, I like Rise Inside. Oh, cool. Yes. Because we don't normally play that one, and we've been playing it on this tour. And, uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, a crushing song. Is that going to be one of the last ones you play tonight? Yeah, we do that record almost in order. I think we switched okay. two songs just because... Uh, Tuning issues, but yeah, that, that one's crushing. Where's my last Saturday gonna fall? Where you know, normally does fourth. Right. Uh, well, we do we do two um, hits, then we do the record, <laughs> yeah. and then we do two more ent intro hits before we <laughs> leave the stage. So yeah, it, it'll be where the where it is in the record, it's like fourth or something like that. I can't wait for Rosa Sharon to come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd Second. be interesting to see uh, his interpretation of that. Yeah, yeah he doesn't, he's not a, a mimicker. Right. He does it his own style, but it sounds fantastic. I'm sure it does. And uh, I know we still got to win back our fans that are missing Howard, but Jesse does an amazing job. He's got a lot of energy, a lot of emotion. Um, and like I said, you can see by our faces that we're having a really fun time. And I feel like the crowd accepts that and has a fun time in return. It's, it's all about. Uh, Contributing and, well, you and having a really fun time with the with the audience, you know. The show sold out. <laughs> is it cool? Like, <laughs> it was sold, it was sold out pretty quick. This is a fun place. We played here, I think, at least once, maybe twice before. And uh, I like the setup with the balconies. Everyone oh, yeah. can see from everywhere. I've seen you in the big room that, down the street of uh, the arena. And was that yeah. disturbed? It, I think it was. Yeah, it was. It was. Mm -hmm. it was a great show. That's the cool thing about doing tours like that. We never thought we would go on tour with a Disturbed or a Five Finger. Um, but they ended up being really great tours. And then after that, you just notice Disturbed shirts coming to our show. Or the Five Finger shirts, like a lot more than That's usual. Cool. And you're like, wow, I guess we won over a couple fans. Really cool. A couple. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you very much for your time, Mike. Wow. Thank, thank you. you.